walk around of a BMW X5 with a M62TU engine. Um, just want to first go over microfilter replacement. Microfilters up in the cowl. Just have to turn these tabs. Uh, usually is one in the center. It's missing on this one. Turn this unlock tab. This will lift up. There's your microfilter. Slide that right out. And microfilters usually come in two different styles. You can get one with um, some carbon built in to help uh, reduce smells in the, in the vehicle. Um, this one doesn't look like it is the style with carbon in it. But this is going to prevent dust from getting in there. And uh, you can also use this port to spray some fridge fresh um, to help keep the system smelling good or if you're going to do a disinfect procedure. Um, I do talk about that in a different video. So installation would just be to slide that right back in and relock it. Let's put that aside for now. On the right side, up under the cover here, which you have to take this panel off. This whole panel comes off just by twisting these clips and lifting it up. Um, and this is how you're going to access to do a... Um, a brake flush. There's the brake fluid reservoir. It's nice. You could actually take this entire panel off here and if you take these, this 13 here on the right side and if you take the 13 here that nut off on that side take this trim off. Um, under here there's going to be This uh, panel is a lock tab right back here. Press that lock tab, that's going to actually slide right out. And this whole central piece is going to slide right out when you take, uh, take this, just lift this off out of your way. This is the engine seal for the microfilter. Um, take that off. This whole panel slides right out, gives you plenty of room to access. Uh, to do a valve cover replacement. Um, this is really on any X5 um, E53 style and uh, really can give you a lot of extra room. Next thing I'd like to mention is this is your jump terminal for charging or jumping the vehicle. Your ground terminal is right over here to the right. If you have the 20 pin connector, this is how the vehicle would get scanned at the dealer. Um, there is an OBD2 port on the driver's side kick panel, but that's only going to read DME or engine computer related faults. This is the water valve. I've seen a few issues with those either failing or allowing coolant to go to the heater core when it actually should be pulsed with modulated off, and that can prevent cooling if you have your AC on. Um, this is the reservoir, and here's the bleed screw. If you were after any repairs on a X5 relating to coolant, you would just fill the coolant here, take this bleed screw off. Um, this is just a plastic screw. I like to replace it um, if you're doing any work, um, just to prevent. Sometimes I've seen these crack, and then the end stays in, and you have to drill it and use an easy out to actually get it out. So you take that out. You'd fill this with coolant until it overflows, put the screw back in, bottom it out, give it just a slight turn, because if you over tighten this, it will snap. Put the cap back on, run the vehicle with the heat. Um, I like to put defrost on high, let it come to temperature, take it for a short drive. Um, if it ever starts to overheat, always shut it off right away and let it cool down. Um, and then after it cools down, um, after you've bled the system and did a drive, park it, um, open this cap back up when it's cool, and do a final top off until the float comes up, and you'll be good to go. That would be after water pump replacement, radiator, replacing this expansion tank itself. Looks like this has a new line. This is probably a replacement expansion tank. I've seen where the seam actually separates, and you'll see like white residue or spray 
a lot of times this will actually only start spraying when the vehicle's under pressure and you won't notice the leak when you stop or the spray will be so fine that you can only see it if you actually feel it. Um, that is a relatively common failure having the seam right here fail. Um, I've seen radiator upper hoses crack. That's actually common on a lot of BMWs unfortunately. Here's the oil filter cover. Oil filter is right under there. Um, you do have a ground over here. Sometimes the, the mounts actually break and you have to replace them. But uh, easy access to the oil filter. Power steering fluid always seems to have this star pattern cap. And this is ATF. You don't want to use power steering fluid. You want to use automatic transmission fluid. Any uh, Dextron transmission fluid would be good. Um, I've seen on this one water pumps fail um, and thermostats. The most common thing is the thermostat actually with the, the map portion, uh, which is a heated element inside the thermostat. When that melts, um, sometimes... Um, when it shorts internally, it will melt the connector, and that can actually pop a fuse in the engine control unit. Um, or I've even seen it where it'll make a small hole, and coolant will get pushed up under pressure all the way up the wiring, which is going to go up along under here, and then it's going to go to the DME box, which is your engine control unit, and that's this box right here. And I've actually seen where you take the connectors off the DME and you're going to find coolant sitting on top of the pins inside the DME. That can cause some running issues or no crank situation. Or I've seen it actually pop a fuse and there's a little black box in here with a set of fuses. You'll see that that fuse, there'll be a fuse in there that's open. That's going to be need to be replaced along with the thermostat. And uh, you're going to have to put a new connector end on the thermostat uh, plug for the map portion. Um, of the thermostat. Um, I actually have seen a few engine control units or DMEs needing to be replaced because of coolant actually wicking up and uh, corroding the pins on the engine control unit itself. Um, that engine control un unit needs to be programmed. You have to use a new unit. You can't use a, a unit from another vehicle or from a junkyard. Um, they are married to the vehicle when they're programmed and they are VIN specific. Mass airflow sensor, secondary air pumps down here, and you know obviously the air box. Uh, pretty easy install. Just pop these clips off if you want to replace your um, engine air filter and uh, your washer reservoir. Uh, if you want to take off your vanity cover, some have actually just a push clip and you push it down which unlocks it. This one actually uses a 5 millimeter Allen. You do a 90 degree turn, you give it a twist, it unlocks it, you can take that cover off. Um, that's going to access the intake manifold which is under here. Um, if you want to uh, do any work there or if you want to take the covers off on the sides, um, there's some little squares here to access uh, two 10 millimeter screws that actually go and hold this panel down. Pull that off. That's going to give you access to the ignition coils if you have to do a coil replacement or a spark plug replacement. Um, one other thing I've seen on this is that uh, the rear PCV plate, which is going to be back here on the back of the intake manifold, fails. And the uh, intake manifold fills with oil. and You're going to end up burning oil, using oil, more oil than uh, you're used to and you might see uh, smoke from the exhaust on a on a first start um, and uh, the fix for that is actually to remove the entire intake manifold and do a reseal replace the rear PCV plate replace the gasket in the front replace your intake manifold gaskets it's also a good idea to spray out and clean the intake manifold